if it's me, I'm, I'm already figuring out I'm gonna put in eight to 10 hours a day as if I was at a quote, regular job, right? I'm gonna make this my job. This is my paycheck, you know, some of that money to give me that opportunity to catch up on some things or establish some things that I just couldn't get around to because I was just too beat from life and work in general. But also you could look at it another way if you have a lot of those things in place or, or maybe they don't interest you. Correct. What would happen if left to our own device, if we could just focus on our craft? Like what a luxury. I, I really think it's a tremendous gift. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the McCove Mindset Podcast. I'm Kevin McCove, and today we're sitting down with Jeremy Weiss, president and founder of CI Records, as well as the Launch Music Conference. It is my pleasure to bring this conversation to you. Jeremy and I have been friends for quite some time. I've had the privilege of speaking at the Launch Music Conference, and I really, truly think that this conversation is chock full of valuable information that can help you become a full-time entrepreneur in the arts. Let's get to it. Thank you for agreeing to chat with me, man. Like in this forum, yeah. This, especially because I know you're busy. You got a whole music conference going on and stuff. So you know, I really, really appreciate it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it as well. I was yeah doing graphic images for like three and a half straight hours. So I might be a bit of a slow starter, but I'm I'm doing my best. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, I mean, right. it should definitely feel like less of a podcast and more of a just a conversation. I feel like whenever we get on the phone with each other too, we're always just like dicing it up. So that's true. It should feel like that. It's very true. Uh, yeah. What's been going on with you? What you working on right now? Well, I'm still booking clubs. So I've got like the Jizza from Wu Tang coming in March, and I've got the punk band the Menzingers coming in May, and I've got um, so many smaller tours as well because that's how you get in the front door for the the bigger tours, you know? So, right. but we're still getting messages about launch dates, you know, like still people are trying to get us to get their band on. We're working on that too. We release small record labels. But you know, I was meaning to ask you, my bad, I didn't mean to cut you off. What, what I meant to say was, nope. I know after the PMB rock situation, I remember hitting you up and Yes, just like checking in because I know that you guys had like worked together. What is what's going on in the scene right now? Like, is there anything like going on in the scene around that situation? Well, like, I mean, are there um, are there any kind of like memorial type situations or like remembrance shows or anything like that? There was a private, you know, invite only kind of memorial. Um, I heard tell from management that that there's work on a a P and B memorial like music event. And I've been waiting for some information on that That's since. Cool. I know that they had a bunch of tracks that he had recorded uh, before his untimely passing. Um, and they, I also know that there were other artists that were working on material as well. So I, I think they kind of want to get all of that to align, the release of all that material, you know? So we'll see. But that's that's what I'm guessing is is the case is they're trying to finish up you know right. so how did you guys start working together or how'd you get linked um, up with them well was it just lancaster I booked i booked a couple of shows up here with him before he was really on outside of philadelphia and, and it's hard to get on in philadelphia so the shows up in lancaster were like epic they were really good and and the team was super excited because it was you know they couldn't believe how many people were into it, knew his name, knew, knew a lot of his songs. And I think that was partially our fault because we were pushing it out there, telling him to go listen to the tracks. And by the time he got here, his first show was damn near sold out, you know, in Lancaster, PA. So he came back a lot. Then they said, why don't you book us some other similarly styled markets? So I wrote like a booking agreement, booked uh, like three or four runs up and down the, uh, from maybe Virginia all the way up through uh, Massachusetts. Then we started talking about meet and greets. They weren't monetizing anything with merchandise or meet and greets. So that's how we uh, just kept it moving. And, and before I knew it, I mean, I was pretty much consulting, running the meet and greets, doing the merchandise and booking a bunch of dates, you know, when their primary agent 
perhaps wasn't interested or able to. Word. Is that I common? How it worked. I like, is it common that like in in Philly it doesn't like it's harder to get on in Philly? So do you do you notice more people come to Lancaster to try to build from there and then work into the city? Or like is that a method that works? I don't think the Philly artists think it's hard to get on in Philly. I just don't I think there are all these smaller markets that are a little less jaded, you know, that are more appreciative than the show and prove big city, you know, you can play New York and you're all excited and there's four people there and three of them work there, you know? So the smaller markets are a little more, right. Uh, <laughs> right. A little more interested, a little less jaded. So that's what we were able to prove. Um, I think they found, I do think that it's more common than, than artists are aware being from a big city has its, pluses but it also has there's just so much noise there's so much competition there's so much going on that it can be very difficult to carve out your own space you know yeah yeah i i can get down with that because i almost feel like well I, i think as an indie i know for myself like when i was performing earlier in my career i definitely was like music conferences felt like the only way that I was really able to play in other markets where I could like meet other people, you know? And that's, I think that's what I really liked about going to music conferences and launch was one of them. Like, I think I played launch in 2016 was like the, the first year that I did it. I remember. Yeah. I had, Mm -hmm. yeah, that was a minute. And I'm like, I had never really been to Lancaster. You know, like mm-hmm. I, was, I never really went mm-hmm. there before. But then when I when I peeped, like that, it was a legitimate music conference. I was like, oh, okay, people are really coming out here to do shows to perform. It was dope, right? I mean, it's a, always been a market since I was a kid, you know. And maybe I had something to do with that in certain genres for sure. But we're situated, you know, between Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Baltimore, D.C., New York, and Boston. So if you pay attention. Uh, what the tour routing is you'd be like i'll take a tuesday i'll take a thursday and you start to build the acumen of the local music fan people from here i don't even think they realize how much more developed their palette for music is just because of the things that have come through i mean tyler the creator did a gas stop in lancaster a couple years ago it was epic played at 800 cap room so it's situated such that we're just outside of a lot of radius clauses and uh, we also route very well. What's what's become really cool, though, is like people have begun to realize management teams and artists that Lancaster and central Pennsylvania at large, you know, are into it. Like we know our stuff. And that, like I said, I don't think the average person in this secondary market area is aware of how much they know just because of all the nationals and special things that have come through that really should not have perhaps, you know, for the size market it is. So they know they're going to have fun. They know it's going to be packed. They know people are going to be down. So that helps. I wanted to ask you about just like music and music competitions and conferences and like what it's like to be an independent artist, all that wrapped up in the fact that like this podcast exists right now because of the joy burst talent search competition. And so they'll be like in this competition, it actually starts today. It starts February 15th. It runs until March 15th. And then there's a two week voting period from March 15th to April 1st. Um, and the winner would get $10,000 cash and they get a publishing deal. And I know that like when you're, especially when you're in the beginning, I mean, look, $10,000 is going to help anybody, but especially when you're like the beginning and you're trying to figure out like, how do I get paid for a show, especially original shows? And like, where do I go to play? And what do I spend my money on and stuff like you, this is like your area of expertise. You like did the whole road manager thing. You did like the touring, you do the booking. Where would you get started? If you were like, I just got $10,000 in a publishing deal. What would you do? Uh, personally, I mean, I think that it's, it's critical to have a, a quality recording. Now, if, if I could, uh, 
suggest maybe perfecting that craft on one zone. That 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 would be a really great way to be totally self reliant, knowing that you could put out like apples to apples, really high quality stuff uh, when you feel like it, when the spirit moves you, or in the the time frame that's required of you. You know, if somebody calls up and says, "I need this." type of song for a sync placement and I need it next week. That That's a beautiful way to do it. Um, I've run an independent record label since I was 15 and, and I, I've gone through the ups and downs of having records that, you know, sold 50, 60,000 copies and thought, this is the year I'm going to really go hard. I'm going to put five figures, six figures into marketing. And, and I realized that that money is still a drop in the bucket to like the big three, the big four record labels. Uh, so I wouldn't really recommend taking every cold call or cold email about, Hey, I really like your song. And, and for $600 a month, I can be your publicist or things like that. I would spend that money developing the infrastructure that, that can make me money or grow my craft. So I would, I would certainly make sure that my recording budget was there. And, and I may actually suggest, you know, if you were going to spend it on marketing, market your tracks yourself and, as, and likewise, perhaps spend that time. Maybe that money can give you time to actually take some time for yourself in your career, as opposed to trying to work you know, 40 hours and, and, and maybe identify people who are vibing with your music, offer them merchandise, offer them club memberships, develop all those things we talk about at conferences and we get really excited. And then we all go home and are confronted with uh, regular life, <laughs> you know? So right. I, I'd like to see it more like it gives you breathing room to follow up on many of the things that you thought you might do, but work and life got in the way. So like, what kind of breathing room? We talking breathing room? Like, let me go grab a, <laughs> what, let me go grab a car, you know, or like, let me take away my car payment, or you know, like, I like really, I think most musicians like they just have no idea what to do. Most people, you know, don't don't gotta sing about musicians, but since those are people probably listening to this, like, what do how do you make your life easier with ten thousand dollars that also still helps to contribute to your music career? Like, I feel like you could put some into marketing. What mark, like what? Facebook marketing, Instagram marketing, like uh, Google AdWords. Like, do I create a funnel? Do I, what do I do? Well, that's what I think uh, when I say breathing room, you know, you sit down and you think, okay, first of all, if you're a musician and you're not living lean and mean, you're not a serious musician. If you're so worried about this standard of living that you got to protect by your day job, you're probably uh, already finished like being honest about being a career musician so I, when i throw out numbers I'm, I'm thinking about living lean and mean i'm thinking you know for example if you're not living with a relative or a parent then maybe you have your total monthly expenses you could winnow down to 2500 bucks or 2000 bucks i know i know it's tight uh especially in certain areas that are that are buzzing or larger where rent is really crazy but you think about that and that's what I meant by the breathing room. Now you, maybe you can set that aside, give yourself 30, 40 days to really dive into what you're going to do with the other, uh, 7,500, seven grand, do the real research, figure out if there's dark ad campaigns or, you know, companies that you and I are likely familiar with that can identify, uh, a fan base that likes music that you're putting out. Maybe you decide that you're going to double down on a web store and some direct mailing and, and some merchandise offers. I do like the idea that a portion of that money would be used to create something that can regenerate funds, you know, that can, that can get the, put that stuff maybe back. Like you spend some money, but over time it's an investment in, in something that's more sustainable for your career. I mean, the, the, the recording component doesn't have to mean, oh, I'm going to go in and re-record everything either. Maybe it's that you wanted to get your music professionally mastered by a proper mastering house. Maybe somebody told you that before. I think that kind of money gives you myriad options to like take a deep 
breath, be able to shelve the distractions for a month or two, carve out a portion of that budget, six, seven thousand dollars, but don't spend it until you figure out how to best use it. Like, is this marketing campaign actually going to be effective? Or, you know, is my merchandise game tight? Did I ask enough people? Did I research and look at other imagery from similarly styled artists? And am I hitting that demographic? I mean, we're in the weeds now, but that was my thinking on it was like, it gives you that final opportunity to perhaps like take a staycation and, and figure out, you know, how to set your career in motion in a variety of ways, like some that I just mentioned, you know. I love that you even said it like that. <laughs> like something super practical, like maybe you could take 30 days <laughs> off, you know, because I think that yeah. sometimes you can be like, oh, yeah. yeah, I just got this like influx of cash. Like this is going to be, yeah, yeah it's like, nah, 30 days is, that's a nice vacation. That's a nice break. And I think. Yeah, but it's not a vacation. It's, it's to work. I think that it gets overlooked how important it is to have time. I find it so valuable to be able to have the luxury at times to do nothing, to think about nothing, to, and I feel like it reboots my creative energy. That's the other component of that entire thought process is if it's me, I'm, I'm already figuring out I'm going to put in eight to 10 hours a day as if I was at a quote regular job, right? I'm going to make this my job. This is my paycheck, you know, some of that money to give me that opportunity to catch up on some things or establish some things that I just couldn't get around to because I was just too beat from life and work in general. But also you could look at it another way if you have a lot of those things in place or, or maybe they don't interest you. Correct. What would happen if left to our own device, if we could just focus on our craft like, what a luxury. I, I really think it's a tremendous gift. Thank you, bro. Thank you. And hopefully we will, you know? Hopefully we will. You know, that's the point. Is like, to get this to, to get this opportunity out to as many independent artists as possible, because it's a real chance. It's, it's like a real thing. There's no catch on the other side of it. It's, it's a real, genuine opportunity, you know? And it's cool. It's cool that the CEO of the company. So Brad Woodgate, I think one of the things I really vibe with him about is like, he's, he wants to be an artist at heart. You know what I mean? Not as always like people, they've become successful in something else. And it's like, Oh, but deep down inside, it's like, I always wanted to be a musician kind of, vibe, you know, and it's, it's so cool that we live in a world today where it's like, you can do it. You can do it. You, if there's something that you genuinely wanted to go do in your life, it's it's okay that you've experienced success over here, but you can go do it. And to know that, like, because, you know, I know him personally, you know, it's like working on that project and seeing the work that he put in to, like, get the song recorded and try to practice and genuinely progress, you know, as an artist and then say... I think he had an idea of what it was like to be an independent artist. What an idea of what it felt like to upload something to Spotify and an idea of like what that hustle was. And then he felt it. It became real. And, and ultimately I think that this is a result. This, the, the joy Burst talent search is a result of like his genuine respect for like, I thought this was kind of like one thing and it's another thing and something that will help other people is this. And that's just like such a pure motivation to do something, you know, is, is to test it out, go through it and say like, wow, you know what? That really is difficult. That really is something. I have the ability to give someone an opportunity to make it a little easier. Let me do that. Mm -hmm. Like that's just feel pure, gratified, you know, you know just to be, to be recognized for, for something you're pretty good at. I think that, yeah, that those trappings are in place in every industry. And perhaps, you know, again, that measure in our industry is sky high. You know, we just had the Grammys. Uh, these aren't that you don't. Grammy winners are phenomenal artists. They're phenomenal 
they've, they've done insane work, but there's a whole lot of work below that. And I, I think, that, you know, a competition like this is, is, is one way for someone to feel like they're, they're being recognized as well. That I think that's yeah. really cool too. Yeah. Right. Well, Jeremy brother, yeah. I appreciate you being on. Thank you so much. Hope to catch up with you, you at the music conference in a couple of weeks. And um, launch yeah, is April 13th, 14th, and 15th this year. It's our our 15th year. We're at the Lancaster County Convention Center for all of the years it's been existent, in existence since, uh, since our 14th year there. We built like a, a very large lineup. We really felt like 15 was, was too big of a year to uh, leave anything uh, any stone unturned. So I think we busted out a really great lineup of both daytime panelists and, and nighttime uh, performers. So we'll have three nights over 150 acts will perform during the day. We'll stage uh, 13 different panels comprised of, of almost 40 music industry professionals from U S and Europe. They all come on their own dime and their own time. And they, and they, and they, impart some real pearls, some things that you can really lean on, but also that sense of community. I'm looking really forward to it, man. Right in downtown Lancaster. So you park and you can walk to everything, uh, in minutes. I'm just, I'm just, I'm in love with it. I love, I love the party and I love the culture and, and I hope to see you there for sure. Word. We'll catch up then brother. All right, man. Thanks.